Wanna move my feet? Wanna drop my one? Wanna move my feet? Wanna drop my one? Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I am so excited. We have finished with the first spread on day eight and today we're going to start a new spread and I'm going to take it up a notch, although <laughs> I really am not sure how much more I can take it up because last night I stayed up until 2 a.m to finish editing day seven, which I was behind, and then I managed to get day eight very late last night, but it was out. So we are up to date now, and half term in UK starts in our school, I think last day of the school year is 19th. So I'm planning to finish all of the videos, hopefully before that, so I can kind of recuperate and get my energy back together and be ready for half term uh, on full mum mode. So I will be filming and editing like crazy until then and I'm telling you this has been such a big challenge but it's really paying off pushing myself so hard and I can't highlight how to me the work ethic is so important and I wish I could see it more in the kind of current generation, but I am trying to bring up my son with the with that in mind, that when you work hard, you really get somewhere in life, you know, and nothing comes for free. And uh, yeah, if you want a certain lifestyle, you have to work for it to get there. So on that note, thank you so much for all of your orders. It's been amazing and it's a true testimony to how you are enjoying all of these tutorials and I really feel like my hard work is going to good use. So with that said, let's now think about something exciting. So I went through my sketchbooks and I found a couple of things which I felt super inspired by and I'll show you what I mean. So this is from my first face stamp, which was the FOTD, face of the day. And then I had the second girl stamp come out, which I'll show you in a bit. So we're gonna be using the second. But the first one, just so you know, there is the very last one left on my online shop, and so, whoever is the lucky one. You can get it uh, because I'm not sure when I will be restocking it. I had quite a few restocks so far, so I'm taking a little break from it. But the very last one is available if you wanted to get this face stamp. And you can do so much. I'll give you a little flip through. This is today is going to be a bit of a longer video to start the new spread and the other upcoming videos will be slightly shorter because I will be basically navigating those of you who haven't seen how to make the face illustration combined with the flower crowns uh, to this video then we can just basically start with creating the crown rather than do all of the work again and again so that you know i don't have a ton of content to edit because it's already pretty challenging so let's go so we have these flower crowns and i absolutely adore them i think they're so gorgeous and that is what i'm kind of intending to create today and the stamp sets that I have used here are, except for the face one, I think they're all sold out. Uh, so these flowers were from a wildflower collection, which I have only, I think, lavender left, maybe a couple of them, and that's it. And then here is another example of a flower crown, which is so, so gorgeous. And it's been such a while since I created these. So let me give you a quick flip through of the things that you can do with that face of the day stamp, as well as these kind of uh, floral elements. So let's see, just to give you a few more. So those were the Wildflower collection stamp sets and I think this is the only one that I have left if you wanted to grab that. And so these are just some examples. Also, I completely forgot, but 
look at these isn't she gorgeous all of these I have done with stencils of mine including this one so here I'm using the stencil to line out the ornament and in these ones I'm using it with I think oh Tim Holtz maybe oxide distress you know it's been such a long time since I've been doing this but I am loving it absolutely loving it I'm chatting too much but I just want to show you so much and going through these kind of illustrations just really is getting my kind of ideas together so you can use these stencils they are available as well and I think this is the chrysanthemum this might be the iris water lily and tulip I think so you can do loads of fun things with them uh, use them in your abstract art or you know as backgrounds or kind of like this is sort of like kimono inspired um, yeah you can do loads so moving on from that sketchbook I just wanted to show you a few things that you can do with the flowers so you can again use them as little details instead of a um, dress some more ideas here with the flower crown here another one and what we can also do today is create like a little element like a headscarf maybe or an Alice band over the face the top of the head and then create the flower crown that's also something that would look quite good and striking here I have done a fringe and stamp sets and here I have done another one of my very favorites a dress piece here and there is so much more and this is the one that we will be using today the moving doll and she is gorgeous she also has a body so the FOTD only is a face stamp set and this one is I should show you actually so here they are this is only face with loads of facial elements to create your own kind of looks and different faces and this one has a body we won't be doing the body today because we will be focusing on the face they can be interlinked they fit together so the eyes can work on this set you can just mix and match things even the the body can be used with the head they are designed to be disproportional because they're obviously dolls you know so they're not uh, your kind of real <laughs> body shapes and all of that so this is the girl and I have used some flowers on her not too many so today we're going to focus on that and she's also one of my favorites love her so many good ones so <laughs> let's start without further ado so the stamp sets we will be using today is moving doll summer florals and palette swatches let's start by swatching out our palette swatches simply because I get carried away during the process and I then forget to leave enough space oh I forgot I was gonna start with the new ones I've been doing this one for the entirety of this part so let's change it up a little bit and use another strip let's use the one below keeping in mind that we will be also doing a face today so chances are we're going to use more colors than we did in the previous illustrations so I'm gonna start here so we have eight colors here they can be swatched that way they can be swatched this way so you can just play around it rectangular and they're supposed to imitate a full pan but obviously they're not as big as a real full pan so they're kind of a smaller version of that okay so now let's work on the face so i'm going to use this element here and i'm going to use the eyes and the lip so as you will see there are two ears on each side so 
and then put it like that, although that would be a cute little panda face, uh, but the ear is supposed to be lower. So I'm gonna stamp the face nice and low to give myself enough space for the flower crown. Now let's do the mouth. And this is always the order I like to do things when I do my face illustrations. I set my lips very, very low, and that is a stylistic approach. If you wanted to play around, you have so many different possibilities to do that with. So you just go for it. And I'm gonna give her some sassy eyes. So I'm gonna tilt the eye to have the eyeliner winked out at a kind of diagonal. So if you drew a line, this is what we're kind of looking at. And you can tilt them as much as you want. The more tilted they are, the more sassier they become and has that headed look. Okay, done. Nice and simple. It took us literally a minute. Next one, we're going to look at summer florals and I think I'm gonna use go kind of easy today because we already spoke a lot about what we're gonna to do today I showed you the uh, illustrations from my sketchbooks and we're gonna do the face so there's a lot of work today so I'm gonna do nice and easy and we'll use some of these flowers so we've got in fact five of these kind of style of a flower, a simplified modern botanical illustration. And then I'm gonna use some of the other elements, possibly leaves, we'll see. I'm not decided yet. I'm gonna start with the largest out of the five. Oh yes, yeah, so we were gonna do a little kind of hat scarf, weren't we? So in that case, let's set the flowers behind her head. So I'm gonna wipe where I don't want there to be a crossover and stamp the flowers behind. As we go through this spread and we have eight options, I'll show you different things you can do. You can do crowns that go over the face. We will do some cute little fringes. We'll just revisit the fun part of illustrating these cute faces. Okay, another flower here. I kind of want the big one again. This time I'm going to rotate it slightly and I'm going to make it look different by basically erasing some of these areas and pushing it in the background. And now we're going to, so we used two of them. Now we're going to go into the middle sized flower and that's a great sprinkler like a little confetti. Again, we're going to wipe off the part that we don't want to be stamped and push it in the back. I'll use the same flower again, just rotating it a different orientation. And again, before you stamp it, just hover it above and see where you need to wipe off the ink. Now we're going to go into the second smallest and do the same like that. And the smallest yet, this cute little thing. I am now going to think about what sort of leaves I want to include here. And I think I'm gonna go for this small double leaf element. And this time I'm going to stamp it quite a way off. And I'm gonna show you how to create a kind of more loose approach. I'm gonna wipe the second leaf, baby leaf off and stamp this one onto the other leaf. And we're gonna also repeat the same. And this time we're going to wipe off the connecting part and just place the leaves here. So I want to add something that's quite light, so not too much of a detail. I think this berry stamp would do nicely. To line out, I'm going to use my carbon ink pen, which has water resistant ink in there. And I'm going to start by just lining things out 
So now I'm going to go over the lips. You will notice that I don't have eyebrows either. If you have the FOTD stamp set, you can use the brows from, from here. I've got the Frida brow here as well, which by the way, she just had her anniversary the other day. Or you can just do something as simple as just a scribble and a line. Scribble and a line. I like these eyebrows because they're modern, they're not too much, you know, they're kind of more of an illustrative way of doing brows. Okay, so I'm gonna follow the line of the top of the head. And now we're going to add that kind of Alice band type of a look. And then I'm going to start by lining out the flowers. And now we have got the berries, which I think for a striking effect, I'm just going to add one more here maybe a couple more or just one in there i will just fill them in with black i think so in a minute we'll swap to our liner that is the 05 and we will do the rest of the things like the eyeliner and also the flower details so zero five let's start by filling in these berries of the flowers and now the liner in this stamp set you can use different colored pencils uh, watercolor anything that you fancy to add color to the eyeliner but when I want to do it nice and easy and quick I just fill it in or you can just stamp it in black ink and be done with it so now I need to make the eyes look the same or similar it's like doing your own makeup when you have to get the other eye to look the same <laughs> I also decided to use my Posca Uni in black to fill in this detail. I want it to be really striking and black. And then on top I might use some gold. So this one is pretty much drying out. Okay, so as you can see, super striking. Now on to some color. So I thought I'll show you a little alternative today to our traditional watercolors. We will still use traditional, just uh, in combination with. So Ecolines have a watercolor that is a dye-based product, so it's not pigment-based, and therefore they're slightly different to work with, but they can be equally fun, and I find them kind of faster if you want to create a face color that you don't need to kind of work too long on. So today I'm going to do Caucasian skin, but if you want it darker, 
there are some great color options here that I can recommend. We have got Burnt Sienna, Deep Ochre, and with a little bit more yellow in there is Yellow Ochre. So you can mix these three to achieve darker colors. And I think I have a Sepia. Yeah, that's another good one to intensify and deepen the skin tone even further. So those four kind of would be your good skin tones uh, mixtures. So first of all, let me just show you how to work with them. Also, I found the gold. I forgot I had this gold. We'll use that on the crown here. And then load your pipette. I mean, that's the other good thing. The pipettes never get stuck with like, or blocked rather uh, with pigments because there is nothing to block them. So you'll still need a brush, you still need water. And I'm just going to add this color throughout the face. Leave some highlights, I'll leave a little highlight on the nose. Nice and easy. Okay, and now you can try and lift wherever you want a little highlight. So I'm just gonna lift it on the top of her nose, maybe a bit on her forehead just a few areas. And then equally, you can also go ahead and add a darker color. So in my case, let's add a bit of deep ochre. So you can see it's a very intense color. For Caucasian skin, you need to be careful so you don't end up adding too much. So I'm just gonna add that in some areas where I want there to be a bit more darker. Oh, we've got this ear here. And then use your brush to blend things. I also like to add this color underneath the eye. above the eye. So today I don't want to focus too much on the face, so I'm just gonna do bare minimum really. But do let me know in the comments if you want me to do one of those videos where we really do more work on the face. If you asked me to like pick just a few colors, burnt sienna would be part of them and then turquoise as well. And then, you know, I'd have to really <laughs> think hard what else I want to limit myself to. Okay, so gorgeous. We're going to just add that as the third color. Beautiful. Absolutely love it. And I'm going to go with that, just stippling my brush lightly underneath the eye as well. If it runs, then I'll just we'll leave it. I'm just gonna add this one for good measure to balance things out. So at this point, she's good. Oh, in fact, I need to swatch out these colors here. So. I have got my lightest Caucasian skin color. I have got my dark shadow color. And I need a little bit more of the burnt sienna.
because these are dye based they kind of interact differently with the paper so I sat it now with a dryer and I wanted to show you these kind of marks that you get and sometimes it seeps through paper but this paper is on a thin side it's not really designed for kind of too much moisture um, so it hasn't really bled through but you can see it has gone through some of the paper fibers uh, it's just something you need to be aware of but I didn't have problems with it when I worked on my thicker papers like 300 GSM so the gold here is quite gloopy and it does get kind of blocked sometimes in the pipette but let's grab a round one no water just as it is and we're going to just kind of dot around these sort of marks I'm packing them on quite strong because I want them to dry and be really sort of poppy. Just a mixture of big and small. So as we lost the contrast, I'm going to go now into sepia and just add a little kind of outlining. And I will set it with a hairdryer like immediately. I just want there to be a bit more sort of definition, which we mostly lost. I'm just gonna use that and like now set it immediately and then do the same on the other side. Okay, I don't want to push the paper too much because I worry that it will start coming through here. So we'll leave it at that. And now let's start with watercolors. I want to correlate kind of the flowers in the lips, which I often do. I should have swatched the sepia. Let me just quickly do that. This is a lovely color palette. I love the colors that we have here already. like so so lips and flowers i absolutely love this red and i'm gonna go for the red so this one here i'm going to leave a little highlight So here, because the flowers are so close together, I'm just going to leave a little line in between them. to carry on and do the rest of the flowers. Okay, so now we can move on to the leaves and we have still two colors, so I can play around with them. I'm gonna take this beautiful kind of muddy green and 
add some of the gold green to it. I'm going to have a mix of the two. I love the mixture of these two greens. Wanna move my feet. Last thing, eyes. For the eyes, I'm just going to go into a grey. Just the corner of it and then I'm going to use water to bring most of it out and blend it out. Okay, this is a good eye color. It's the, I think it's the Moon Glow. So it separates a little bit. Shadow Violet, I think it's Shadow Violet. So it separates into a little bit of blue and it's great for kind of for eye colors. This needs to dry and I'm gonna show you a close up. So here we are. I should actually stamp another one here to note down the eye color as well, which I will do later. But here, she is i think she's super cute let me know what you think and we will continue with our girls and the flower crowns as the month of flower power <laughs> okay so i'll see you next time <laughs> 